Hey everybody, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at retouching landscape photos. I've got this photo of sunrise. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to apply some camera raw stuff to it. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to clean up some blemishes. We're going to increase tone, contrast, color, all that stuff, and we're going to sharpen it up. That's what we're going to do in this tutorial. I hope you'll stick around and watch it. So as you just saw, we're going to edit this photo. We're going to do all these changes. So I'm going to close this photo and we will jump in and get started. Now, if you go over to tutvid.com, there is this .cr2 file that you can download with this tutorial. There's a link in the description of this tutorial. You can go and download this photo and follow right along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this photo into Photoshop. Now, part of the key with any photo retouching or any photography is you really kind of want a decent photo out of the camera. You want to try to expose. I like to underexpose a little bit, especially if I'm shooting in camera raw. I know I can always pump some light into my photos later. Now, this tutorial, we are using a camera raw image. This is a .cr2 file. If you're using a Nikon or a, a, any camera that is capable of shooting raw images, I highly, incredibly highly recommend you start shooting raw images, especially if you want an insane amount of flexibility when it comes to retouching and editing your photos. If you have a Nikon, it's going to be a .nef file. Um, Olympus and Minolta and some of the cameras, uh, some of the other camera manufacturers have different file extensions, but it's still a camera raw file. Adobe Photoshop camera raw should be able to handle it, no problem. So with that out of the way, uh, oh, and if you only have JPEGs, let's say you only have shot JPEGs, you're not going to be out of the loop. I'm going to walk through this whole retouching process. You can do it on a camera raw file or a JPEG. So if you have a JPEG, you would just open it up right into Photoshop. So that's exactly what we're going to do with the camera raw file. Act like this whole dialog doesn't exist and just hit the open image button. It's going to jump it right into Photoshop where we have it open. If you've opened a JPEG, boom, this is what you have right off the bat. The first thing we need to do is right click on our background layer and choose convert to smart object. This is going to allow us to apply a camera raw filter to this layer. It's going to take a second to convert. This is a massive 16 bit image. We're going to go filter, camera raw filter. Note the hotkey, shift control A, that would be shift command A on the Mac. Camera raw filter, and check it out. Boom, we're right back to the camera raw dialog. Slightly different camera raw, but it's going to do the trick. So the first thing we want to do is begin editing the color um, of the photo. So I'm going to grab the temperature slider. You can see to the left it's very blue, to the right it's very orange. I want to make it a little blue, so I'm going to drag it, maybe negative 12, that's fine. Uh, with tint, we can either make it very green or very purple. A very underrated slider, I would say. Uh, for this sunrise, this is a sunrise shot here in Philadelphia. I'm going to boost the tint uh, to about plus 20 or so. And in order to infuse a lot of color, I really want to bring out the color of the sun rising and the color that it's just flicking right up here onto the edge of the cloud. So we're going to boost vibrance to plus 40. That's really cool. All right, now we're going to come over here to the curve. Uh, if you haven't used curves before or curves in camera roll, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it here. You probably have the parametric curve. We don't want that. There's not nearly as much power in it. We're going to go to the point curve and we're going to choose channel red. So now we can pump a bunch of red into our image, what looks like pink, or pull a bunch of cyan, which is a very light blue, into the image. Well, we're going to start right up here. I'm just basically clicking on the line to add a little point and I'm going to pull up just a little bit. That's going to infuse some red into the highlights of our image. Then we're going to go to the green channel. We're going to do kind of the opposite. We're going to infuse not green, but magenta, right? We've got green. The opposite of green is magenta. Remember over here, the tint slider, we have green, magenta. Ooh, that kind of looks cool. Um, so we've got tint, leave it around plus 20. Go back to the tone curve. We're going to pull down on the magenta um, down here in the shadowy parts of the image. So I'm just going to pull down on it down there. Just, just adds a little kiss of magenta to the shadowy parts of the image. Then we're going to go to the blue channel. And here we're going to pull down on the blue. Now, if you look here, we've got blue. The opposite of blue is yellow. So I want to add some yellow up here to the brighter part of the image, right? Yellow is going to mix well with the pink and the red. So we're going to pull down on that just a little bit. And then in order to combat yellow, maybe bleeding into the blues, I want to add a little bit more blue to the darker parts of the image. So I just click, it adds another point and drag up a little bit. So we've added a bunch of yellow to the brighter parts of the image and made sure that we add a little bit of extra blue to compensate to the shadowy parts of our image. Now that we've done that, we're going to come over here to the lens correction tab, right to the manual tab. You may default to the color tab. Go to the manual tab 
And what I want to do is increase the distortion. So this is going to give me this kind of either very bulbous, bizarre effect. I don't want that. I want to kind of stretch the image this way. So I'm going to set distortion to, I don't know, somewhere between 20 and 25. That looks good. And then we need to obviously scale it a little bit because we want to get rid of, we don't want this transparency around the edges of our photo. So go ahead and scale until you see that go away right there. 107, 108, something like that is cool. And we're also going to rotate this. I'm just going to tip it over just a smidge, maybe like that. Really try to level out our mainland there. I don't mind if the bridge looks like it's tipped over a little bit. That looks kind of neat. Um, and now actually that I'm looking at the image, what I think we'll also do, it's a little dark around the edges. So we're going to boost our vignetting. Just drag it all the way up to 100 just to start. You can see it looks pretty bad, um, very kind of uneven. So we're going to reduce the midpoint by pulling it all the way back and that spreads and kind of feathers the vignetting out. Now it's just way too bright. So now we're going to pull back on our vignetting till about plus 20. So you can see we went from about you know, right there up to about plus 20. It just kind of lightens the edges a little bit. So that's really neat. Um, and also, well, actually before I make any changes, if you hit the little Y button down here, it shows you a little before and after. So you can see before, after, looks pretty cool. Now that I'm looking at, there's a couple more changes I wanna make to the image back here in the basics tab. Uh, so go ahead and hit this button a couple times. There we go, we're back to our fully edited image. I wanna add some clarity. Clarity is like this mid-tone punch that gives you this really like gritty contrast. Typically, you don't wanna pull it up to 100, it looks really bad, but you can give a nice subtle punch. It helps define the edges of the clouds a little bit more and things of that nature, these like isolated bits of contrast. It really helps draw that detail out. So I'm gonna just push this up to about plus 12 here, whatever, something like that looks good. Just use your eyes, do what feels right to you. Uh, and then also, I wanna darken these highlights here in the middle of the image. So I'm gonna pull the highlights down to about negative 40. And you know what, I'm also gonna pull the whites down right about like so that looks pretty cool and we're going to increase the shadows just a little bit and the blacks while we're at it okay just like that that looks pretty neat we're going to go ahead and hit okay and it's going to take a second and apply the camera raw filter now the cool thing about the camera raw filter is it's a non-destructive edit you can go in here and shut it off if you don't like it turn it back on and it's there you have a mask you can go in and you know fill the mask with black or fill it with white make the effect completely go away or come back. You can double click camera raw filter, the word, and you come right back to the editor and you can see all your settings are in place. That's awesome. And you can also just select this little slider and that allows you to, well, you'll see a little dialog box pops up. You can set a blend mode uh, for the actual filter. You can also reduce the opacity. So you can sort of fade the effect in or out. Now that's gonna look very strange because of the uh, lens correction that we did. So you essentially have two photos overlaying one another. You probably don't want to do that. Hit cancel. But just know that you have a lot of options when you go with a smart object and a smart filter like camera raw filter. Really cool stuff. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I can see a blemish right over here. Um, typically, we would spend a little bit more time going over the whole image. Um, I'll have that in the written portion of this tutorial, um, also over on tutvid.com. Link is in the description. We're going to go ahead and just zap this blemish right here because it's so noticeable. It's a little spot on my center. Go ahead and go up to Layer, New Layer, and you could just call it Blemishes, something like that. And we're going to grab the Healing Brush right there, Healing Brush. And up here in the control bar, we want to choose Sample, and current and below. The reason we're doing that is because we want to make our edits on a new layer. We don't want to edit and sort of wreck our original layer. We want this to be totally pure and unadulterated so we can always go back to our completely original image even if we come back to this image months later. So we're gonna create or correct these blemishes on their own layer. So that's why we're choosing current and below. It allows this tool to sample from the layer beneath it while painting on this blemishes layer. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key and that's gonna allow me to sample from right there. And I'm just gonna paint right over that blemish. There we go, very cool. And actually, I also had noticed there was a blemish up here somewhere, yeah, right there. It's just a very, very subtle dark spot in the image. Um, I just wanna get rid of stuff like that, as I noticed it. So there we go, we corrected the blemishes. And now what we're gonna do is apply a color contrast and tonal overall toning uh, adjustment. So this is one of my favorite ways to do this. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map, and hit okay. It's gonna give us crazy colors, whatever. Some of you, it might have defaulted to just like a black and white, which looks pretty cool. It's a really neat black and white. There's a lot you can do with the gradient map. Basically, it takes the color on the left and maps it to the darkest pixels in the image and the color on the far right and maps it to all the brighter parts of the image. So if I drag the white back, you're gonna see a lot more white is introduced because the whole part of the image that would fall from like, you know, very light grays all the way up to the whitest whites, all of that is gonna be painted with a solid white. 
So in the same way, well, here's an easy way to look at it. We've got this red to green gradient. If we hit that, you can see the darkest parts of the image are red and the brightest parts of the image are green and everything in between is a, like a, a variation of like a red, green, brown, if you will. That looks very, very bad as you can see. So we're gonna create our own custom gradient with a couple colors um, that sort of are gonna go with our image. So I'm gonna double click on the lower handle on the far left, the dark, uh, the darks. This is what's gonna affect the dark colors in our image. And the color that I want is 4C, two, whoops, that's three, 2F, uh, four, seven. I had that written down. So you can see it's a very dark muted magenta. You don't want anything that's crazy bright. It's going to really give your image a very nuclear feeling, very pop arty, maybe really not what we're going for uh, in this case. Now for the lighter parts of the image, we want a very creamy buttery yellow. So I'm going to go with F8, F3, CD. And you can see it's a very nice creamy yellow. Hit OK to finish up with the gradient editor. And you can see it's actually kind of a pleasing effect that is sort of shining through this gradient map. Um, that's not good enough for us though. What we need to do now is go over here to the blend modes in the layers panel and choose soft light. This gives this really great pop of contrast as well as influences the color that is already there. See if we use the little eyeball to shut that layer off, and turn it back on, you can see what we've got. You can even do something like hit Command or Control J, duplicate it. Eh, maybe not quite what we want. I'll just drag that down to the garbage. So the next and last step is to go ahead and sharpen this image. Just bring out some of the detail on the edges, right? We've got uh, this bridge here that would be pretty cool if we brought out a little bit more of the detail, if we could really see the edges, things like that. So uh, let's zoom back out. And this is pretty easy. We're gonna use a hotkey, Control Shift Alt or Command Shift Option E. What that does is it takes all of your current visible layers and merges them to one new layer. So this is like all this stuff here, but bam, in one layer. First thing we're gonna do, and something that you don't always have to do, but it's just a good idea to do um, before doing this adjustment that we're about to do. It's a good idea to go image, adjustments, uh, desaturate. Make the this copy of the image black and white, and then go filter, other, high pass, and we're gonna set this to 2.0, just like that. So if we click over here, you can see uh, there's this little box, which is basically like, what part of the image do you wanna see? And it just shows up here in the little viewfinder. I'm gonna click over here on the bridge and you can see that we've got a little haloing action happening. That's all just gonna help bring out the edges of the bridge. Hit okay. And we're gonna set the blend mode of the sharpening layer to soft light. Now it doesn't look like much happened, but if we zoom in on the bridge and we shut that sharpening layer off, you can see the edges of the bridge are brought out and just kind of, they've got a little pop to them. If you feel like it's too much, no worries, because again, this is non-destructive sharpening. You can just reduce the opacity of that layer. So just like that, we have taken an image, which was a raw, unedited photo, whoops, a raw, unedited photo that looked a little something like that, and we've transformed it to this image using a few steps, all completely non-destructively, adjustment layers, editing layers for our blemishes, and also a sharpening layer. You could actually use smart sharpening on the bottom layer. The reason I didn't is because I was correcting blemishes. Let's say you were doing something with, a, 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 I don't know, a national park where you were, had to edit mountains and get rid of some birds and things like that. When you sharpen the original layer, um, there could be issues with edges coming back in and things like that being noticeable. So I usually like to create a, an entirely new layer um, and sharpen on that layer um, and, and do that. You could even convert that layer to a smart object and apply smart sharpening to that. So a lot of different options all again totally non-destructive and that's it you've retouched a landscape photo i hope you've enjoyed it thank you so much for sticking around and watching it make sure you follow me on twitter and instagram both of them just at tutvid t-u-t-v-i-d thanks so much for watching guys take it easy